A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses made his way back down the mountain with two tablets of the testimony in his hands. Tablets inscribed on both sides, inscribed on the front and on the back. These tablets are the word of God, and writing on them was God's writing engraved on the tablets. Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, This is the sound of the battle of the camp, he told Moses. Moses answered him, No song of victory is this sound, no wailing of defeat this sound. It is the sound of the chanting that I hear. As he approached the camp, he saw the camp and the groups dancing. Moses' anger blazed. He threw down the tablets he was holding and broke them at the foot of the mountain. He seized the calf that they had made and burned it, grinding it to powder which he scattered on the water. And he made the sons of Israel drink it. To Aaron, Moses said, What has this people done to you for you to bring such a great sin on them? Well, let not my Lord's anger blaze like this, Aaron answered. You know yourself how prone this people is to be evil. They said to me, Make us a God to go at our head. This Moses, this Moses, the man who brought us up from Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. So I said to them, Who has gold? And they took it off and brought it to me. I threw it in the fire, and out came this cat. On the following day, Moses said to the people, You've committed a grave sin, but now I shall go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. And Moses returned to the Lord. I am grieved, he cried, that this people has committed a grave sin, making themselves a, gold, a god of gold. And yet, if it please you, forgive this sin of theirs. But if not, then blot me out from the book that you have written. The Lord, wrote, the Lord answered Moses, it is the man who has sinned against me that I shall blot out from my book. Go now, lead the people to the place of which I told you. My angels shall go before you, but on the day of my visitation I shall punish them for their sin. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. They fashioned the calf and bore and they worshiped an image of them, exchanging the God and who was their glory for the image of a bull that eats grass. They forgot the God who was their Savior who had done such great things in Egypt, such portents in the land of Ham, such marvels at the Red Sea. For this he said he would destroy them, but Moses, the man he had chosen, stood in the breach before him to turn back his anger from the destruction. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Through the good news, God. Jesus put a parable before the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in this seed field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it is grown, it's the biggest shrub of all. It becomes a tree, so the birds of the air come and shelter in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast the woman took and mixed with three measures of flour, till it was blended all through. In all this, Jesus spoke to the crowd in parables. Indeed, he would never speak to them except in parables. This was to fulfill the prophecy. I will speak to you in parables and expound things hidden since the foundation of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, those who are visiting with us at home, I am in St. Mary's Dingle Parish on the Dingle Peninsula in Southern Kerry, County Kerry in the Southern Ireland, almost as far south in Ireland as you can get. Of course, a few days ago, I was as far north of Ireland as you can get, uh, northern eastern Ireland, and now I'm in southwestern Ireland. Interestingly enough, though, Probably uh, in Florida, where I live, the drive from my house 
to Pensacola, which is on the peninsula, is seven hours long, as long a drive as it would take to get from one end of Ireland north south to the southern tip of Ireland. Um, what a pleasure, what a joy, what an honor it is to be here. And I want to talk about the pravity, the pravity of this God. The first reading today is about the Jews, the sons of Israel, fashioning a golden calf because Moses was up on the mountain getting the Ten Commandments and they were wondering where Moses was. Less than 40 days and they're molding a golden calf. After all the signs, the miracles that God had done for them, bringing them out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea, giving them food, giving them drink, uh, giving them a plenty to eat, leading them through the desert to the promised land, and yet they went to pray. Why do I say to pray? Why do I use the word to pray? Because we don't hear it today in this first reading, but God, when he realizes that they are fashioning the golden calf, the sons of Israel, while Moses on the mountain giving the Ten Commandments, he says, Go down to your people and become the prayer. And Moses makes it very clear to them that indeed they committed a grave sin. This to pray the grave sin. And what was this depravity, this grave sin, the sin of idolatry? My brothers and sisters in Christ, the sin of idolatry is putting anything, absolutely anything, before our Lord, our God, our Creator, our Savior, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Anything. It could be fame. It could be fortune. It could be any type of bad. It could be a relationship. It could be actually, interestingly enough, it could be a devotion. It could be a devotion. St. John of the Cross warns us about our devotions becoming uh, like an idolatry where, in, where we allow our devotions, whether it be to a particular saint, whether it be to a particular apparition, uh, it could be anything that keeps us from seeing God clearly, being one with God, one with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross. Now I will say this, that indeed our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary, if right, if healthy, if proper, Mary will always point us to her Son. She will never allow us to become depraved. She will never allow us to enter into idolatry. And so indeed, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our devotion to Mary should be pure, it should be rooted in the rosary, it should be asking the Blessed Mother to point us to her Son at all times. As we see in the nativity seat, as we see at the foot of the cross, Mary always looking at Jesus. So when we look at Mary, we are looking at Jesus. But let us be mindful, my brothers and sisters in Christ, in our lives. To not allow anything to get in between us and our relationship with Jesus. And that's why receiving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in communion, as often as possible, every day if possible, I posted today on social media memory from eight years ago, where I said the goal of every Catholic should be that at some point in their life, for the rest of their lives, a daily communicants, daily mass going. This is the, the surest way of never entering into idolatry. By staying in a state of grace and receiving our Lord in communion each and every single day, spending time as often as possible in front of our Lord, whether it be at Mass, whether it be uh, in the Adoration Chapel, whether it be just sitting in church in front of the Blessed Sacrament, in front of the Tabernacle. But regardless, my brothers and sisters of Christ, let us be careful to never allow any earthly thing any earthly thing become an idolatry for us, a source of idolatry. Let us always, always remain in the state of grace. Seek Jesus, seek his face, allow him to remain in us as we remain in him, that beautiful Eucharistic uh, spirituality. And again, today is the feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola. And so uh, we ask St. Ignatius to 
uh, intercede on our behalf as we do. St. Joseph, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Of course, this is St. Mary's Church, all the Irish martyrs and saints.